I see quite a few seemingly non-payroll trends that are actually flowing into payroll. For example, um, non-monetary benefits such as wellness activities really start to play a part in the payroll field. You know, it's about the entire employee experience, uh, systems and applications, even related to your self-service and your payroll, your pay slips is now uh, relevant in terms of tools of communication and how you are requesting your documents, your salary letters, your master detail updates and, and those kind of things. So that for me, is really a trend that I've seen. Um, the the non monetary benefits that are actually really starting to play a part in in the fuller picture of of payroll benefits. Welcome to the Payroll Podcast with your host Nick Day. Find out what it takes to truly discover what it takes to elevate your career within payroll as we meet with the industry leaders who are shaping the industry for tomorrow. Hello and welcome back to the Payroll Podcast. My name is Nick Day, CEO at JGA Recruitment Group, specialist payroll recruiters. Now, whether you're listening to this for the first time or the 50th time, please do take this opportunity to go and subscribe to the podcast, share it with all your payroll friends. Let's really get the message out there to improve the profile of payroll globally. And actually, as it happens, I have a global leader on the payroll podcast today. So on to my today's guest. Today, I'm joined by Diana Geldenheis, who is based in the UAE and is CEO of both OPS, which is Outsourced Payroll Solutions, and Gulf HR, both businesses that Diana has developed and grown after identifying a need for efficient and cost-effective services in both HR and payroll for the middle East. Now, Diana is an expert in her field. She knows the complexities and the nuances of HR and payroll in the Middle East. In 2016, she won the Emirates Women Award in the business category in honor of her extraordinary professional and entrepreneurial achievements. And she is a leader and an entrepreneur that has mentored and grown international teams for more than 20 years, spanning industries and geography. So, Diana, welcome to the Payroll Podcast. How are you today? I'm doing excellent. Wow, what an introduction, Nick. I uh, I enjoyed that. Thank you. <laughs> Great to have you on board. Of course, you pioneered HR technology in the Gulf in a time of crisis. You founded OPS in 2008, steering the business as the region's specialist in the payroll outsourcing market. You then had the opportunity to acquire Gulf HR in 2011, which enabled you to interface technology and, our, and HR solutions to become a true global payroll and HR leader in the Middle East. However, your entrepreneurial journey started way back in 1996 when you established an educational supplies firm in South Africa. So rather than me tell the story, it would be great if you could just tell all our listeners a little bit more about your career journey, how you found yourself in global payroll, and more pertinently, I guess, how you became such a thought leader in the world of middle Eastern payroll operations. You take me back many years now. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we came to the UAE in 1998, like uh, normal expatriates for a three-year stint, I started to work in uh, the HR community. I became the HR manager later um, in in a more strategic position in HR in educational institutions in the Middle East. By about 2007, 2008, um, I realized that there is a need for payroll and I decided to venture out on my own. Now, payroll at that time wasn't one of the prestigious kind of a careers. It was more a back office function, I guess, to some extent, uh, many, many people still view that. We started with a small office and we got our first couple of clients. We got uh, partnerships with uh, UK companies and there you go. Payroll was born, a unique uh, payroll outsourcing company. And then, of course, the economic downtime hit. Now, that was to our benefit because all of a sudden companies needed external providers to do their payroll. As uh, economic downtime, similar to what happened now recently, is um, negative for some, for companies like us in the outsourcing world, it actually really enhances um, the offering that we can give. Sure. So tell me how that links then to you. You've got your obviously CEO of two major businesses, Golf HR being one, OPS uh, the other. Are they run very separately or do you manage to bring the platform, for example, on Global HR into the business at OPS? Are they linked in any way? 
Yes, yeah, very true. We have uh, our HRMS software, the payroll part of it, that we run our OPS payroll with. We are very excited to say, though, that we uh, were able to create our own payroll software specifically for OPS uh, in the beginning of, uh, of 2021. So we are now gradually transforming all our clients into our unique OPS payroll software. Fantastic. Fantastic. So for those listening to this who maybe are not so familiar with payroll in the Middle East, how does it differ from other regions? What are the intricacies or the unique elements of of what makes the Middle East payroll so different or, or potentially so challenging? I have to start um, by giving you a little bit of history of how salaries had been paid and how payroll had been done many years ago. Right. So um, up to just over a decade ago, a large part of the blue collar workers were still paid out in cash. I remember how our payroll system had to download a report that had to be sent to the bank to request how many five dirhams, 10 dirhams, 100 dirhams had to be sent as a cash drop wow. to make sure that every employee gets his pay packet in the right denomination. Fast forward. Um, so in 2009, this changed quite a bit when the wage protection system or WPS as we uh, locally know it was introduced. It was firstly here in the UAE. Um, UAE pioneers quite a bit of of the advancement. Then Qatar, KSA, Oman and the rest. This was to ensure workers and employees get their full dues on time. There was previously some problems with that. But not only that, it now had to be paid through banks and, and approved financial institutions. This was music to our ears in the payroll uh, profession, and it was significant for us because it was a step forward in the payroll profession. We got more involved in the disbursement and the treasury part of the payroll process. This was really good for us and important because before salary payments, you know, the last part of the payroll process was mainly a finance function. WPS um, helped us and the winds of change started because the payroll now became an independent function and it became far more significant and obvious. So prior to that, did did, did companies have a payroll department or was it all done by finance? And and since that WPS was introduced, are we now seeing the emergence of specific payroll departments then more now than we did before? Yeah, you know, payroll was typically a function underneath finance. So um, it wasn't an independent payroll uh, function. There were shared offices, shared services. Uh, you know, our uh, hospitality industries had a shared services where, sure. say, the Jumeiro Group had um, all the different hotels underneath there. But all along, it was second to the finance function. Uh, and it lately actually moved towards uh, becoming an independent payroll function. I want to um, take a little bit more of a step back into, into the history of payroll, if I may. Sure. Back to what the payroll world looked like in the 90s. Uh, well, the, the lens now is on how we paid our professional expatriates. Those are people like you and I that came to the Middle East for a three-year stint, I think uh, people can recall at that time it was typically called uh, a hard a hardship zone and uh, we had to get allowances for that as well. It's hardly that anymore with all the beautiful restaurants and uh, mm. and all the five-star hotels that we have these days. So a payslip for an expat at that time looked a little bit like a cafeteria list. You had anything in there from a travel allowance, a housing allowance, a cola, cost of living allowance, Um, even beach club allowances, Nick, and then, of course, your basic salary. So um, it was not a miss to also have regular bonuses and and lots of other perks at that time. You could choose if you wanted it to be split up in um, your home currency, a part to be sent there, dirhams, rials, or whatever country you, uh, you are currently in. And it was a good life at that time for an employee, but not for payroll. So when you ask me about payroll um, and and why is it or how is it different than other parts of the world, people typically see that payroll is not complicated in the Middle East. But there are so many different nuances and things that one has to account uh, for that um, it actually, I I want to uh, agree to disagree. It is rather complex. If you think of things such as exchange rates that had to change all the time, pension calculations, it's different, uh, differently calculated for GCC nationals working in other countries. So an Omani in Saudi 
is being paid different than a Bahraini in, in Saudi uh, in terms of pension. Sure. Uh, there's social security, there's gratuity. I'm not sure if, uh, if the rest of the world talk about gratuity or do they rather talk about pension? It can be both depending on where you are. But I think the key thing is, even in the UK, if you stand at the UK payroll, every single payroll department in the UK is, is unique in itself, whether it's the, by your sector, by the frequency you process, by the deadlines, by the employee size. So I have no doubt at all that, um, you know, to, to summarise a UAE payroll, for example, as being simple, I can imagine there is a, a huge number of complexities within that that people don't consider, which you've just highlighted, for example, as a, you know, as you say, an Iranian working in a different location is going to have different issues to, to, to a Bahrainian. So these are things that are certainly new to me, and I'm sure that uh, there's some really challenging aspects that businesses would certainly overlook if they didn't have that, that, ex- that expertise that you, you're able to offer. Yeah, and that's why I think people like you, Barry, Matthews, we need to up the, the, the game of the payroll profession because it really is quite complicated um, in all the different regions. As you rightfully said, there's, um, even in the UK, different departments have different ways of, of how they calculate that. I mean, tax calculations in countries such as Jordan, Egypt, Lebanon, we say we don't have tax calculations, but we do. It's hardly ever straightforward. It's um, sure. The interpretation of the legal aspects is is quite complex. And as you know, it comes out in Arabic. So we've got to translate from Arabic to English. And it requires some fancy footwork sometimes to advise people as to um, how a dispute would be, because it always reverts back to to Arabic as an example. What about on the the payroll trend side of things? If I reference the the likes of Singapore, we've seen it go from, from almost nothing to suddenly being one of the most technically advanced you know, countries and, and, and cities in the world. Has that been the same with payroll as well? Because obviously, um, if you mentioned WPS then coming in, since then, payroll's really come into the limelight. It's starting to find its feet as its own function. But often when you haven't got all the baggage that came before, like we have in the UK of, you know, centuries worth of, of, of payroll trying to establish itself, when you start from a, a later standpoint, actually, you can often advance much, much quicker. You're not being held back by what, by what went on before. So what are some of the emerging trends that you're seeing in the Middle East at the moment? And are they are they further ahead, potentially, than what we're seeing in the European market or even in the UK? Or, or are they similar? Um, I mean, I listened to quite a few of your and, and other podcasts. I wouldn't say that we're ahead. Um, okay. I would say that it follows different tracks. We've got quite a bit of our internal challenges that we've got to uh, face and adhere to. Um, for example, a person working in one country and being transferred to another country, but want to continue employment. This is those kind of things that we still are, are faced with. Uh, so when I think of payroll trends, and I, I really only think of maybe next year and, uh, and, and what's going to happen, I see quite a few seemingly non-payroll trends that are actually flowing in into payroll. For example, um, non-monetary benefits such as wellness activities really start to play a part in the payroll field. You know, it's about the entire employee experience, uh, systems and applications, even related to your self-service and your payroll, your pay slips is now uh, relevant in terms of tools of communication and how you are requesting your documents, your salary letters, your master detail updates and, and those kind of things. So that for me is really a trend that I've seen. Um, the, the non-monetary benefits that are actually really starting to play a part in, in the fuller picture of, of payroll benefits. Another trend is as um, employers are offering more flexibility uh, in terms of work hours and and the place of work. Now, we all know what um, speeded up that part before our mechanism here in the Middle East that we used was was unpaid leave. We could only use unpaid leave if you wanted to to be off work and you couldn't use you utilize your vacation leave. Now, due to the huge impacts of the events in 2020, Companies are offering more ways of how employees can be paid and structured in the in terms of their times, in terms of independent contracts. And that is actually quite beneficial for the employees. Have you ever asked yourself, how can I recruit payroll staff effectively? Please don't give up on your recruitment project just yet. Here at JGA Payroll Recruitment, we appreciate the difficulties associated with attracting, recruiting and retaining top payroll talent. We also understand just how costly a poor payroll hire can be. 
JGA Recruitment are a niche payroll recruitment agency who will partner with you to resource payroll candidates who will improve both the accuracy and efficiency of your payroll department. Contact us today on 01727 800 377 or visit jgarecruitment.com to find out more. That was, that was actually where I was going to go, really, is have you found that the pandemic over the last 12, 24 months, has that really changed some of these things that you mentioned? So is this, is this one of the reasons that we're seeing more wellness-type benefits being called raised through the payroll, some of those work balance um, hours and working from home and things like that? Have you seen those changes um, happen in, in the Middle East as a result of the pandemic, or were those things starting to happen anyway? I would say as a result of the pandemic and absolutely I could see um, the change and I could see the change for the good and for the better. Employees are flexible even in in the intervals of salaries that they are paying. You know, before they paid on a monthly basis. Um, If you wanted a salary advance, it was a, a huge process to get that. Now the payroll and employees are more flexible in terms of getting salaries for lesser periods of a month. I would like 10 days of my salary. It's still in the emerging phases, but that's such a good thing that it gives employees a complete flexibility and and autonomy in how they want to be paid. So that's another um, really nice trend that I can see evolving. Certainly in the UK, I think the pandemic has really raised the profile of payroll. I think people have seen that payroll departments have been, you know, that 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 those key workers that have been, had to continue to make sure payroll is run correctly. They've, they've been negotiating 30 plus changes to furlough legislation. But of course, there are key line workers, whether you're in the NHS or elsewhere, they need to be paid in order to continue to work. So it's had a real impact on the way that payroll is being perceived here in the UK and, and further afield. Have you, have you felt that the, the role of payroll professionals then in the Middle East has also change the way that payroll is perceived where you are as well is it is it has the profile been raised as a result of the lot in the last 12 24 months worth of challenging circumstances it's found itself in it's getting there um i wish i could say it was faster but it but it is getting there and um each one of us need to do our bit you know so we internally have decided that uh, we need to create a payroll community Um, We have done that where we offer payroll training, we bring the people together, we connect them, we grow them, we find ways that they they can actually learn from each other. So we're quite excited about uh, about this new concept that we're going to launch in a a couple of weeks from now. At this point in time, a not-for-profit, it is really to bring the payroll community together and to say, we have to raise the bar of, of payroll. What I love is it sounds like unilaterally across the globe, everyone's trying to do a little bit to just raise the profile. You mentioned Brian Matthews there earlier, but I know this is happening across the globe. You're you're obviously doing it in the Middle East as well. I think if we all do this collectively at the same time, it will all slowly start to have a real global impact on how Poland is perceived, which I think is absolutely fantastic for the industry as a whole. And it's great to see so many leaders like yourself, Dan, are really putting so much passion and energy into helping raise the profile of payroll, which I think is just excellent. I I love hearing those stories. Going forward then for the Middle East, what are the key priorities that you're going to be focusing on, both as as an entrepreneur, as a CEO, of course, of OPS? What are the key priorities going forward for, for Middle Eastern payroll? So we've got a really exciting, admittedly demanding roadmap ahead of us um, in the next 18 months. And um, firstly, it's forever about the client experience. We recently had a client feedback that they said they're not used to a personalized payroll experience. Um, and they uh, they found that to be so fresh and uh, they appreciated that. And um, knowing that they can't be experts in the Middle East. So to have someone pick up the phone and say, um, how can we help you holistically? What payroll problem and other problems can we help you solve? So that's been a focus and that is, uh, we've got a, an actual strategy plan that we're going to execute over the next um, six months for for this. We map out custom payroll processes for each client. We configure workflow. Those kind of things is is what we want to do to to make sure that it is unique to everyone. 
digitization and automation, we can't um, have a conversation without tech, can we? Sure, no. So um, we recently introduced what we call uh, eVDS. Clients no longer have to send emails or save spreadsheets on SharePoint or uh, Google Drive or wherever. We now have a single source of truth where data is integrated with their master system or the clients themselves have access to load the, the data once ready for approval. That whole audit trail kind of process is being eliminated. There's not many sources of truth. We're quite excited about that. And uh, the pilots that we've done has been met with quite a, a lot of uh, success. Uh, I mentioned the payroll community. You know, people really want to learn. They want to know more. They're hungry to learn. We've... Um, of our own, own bat created a fundamentals in, in payroll training for the Middle East, specifically for the Middle East, that we've put on a learning uh, management system platform. We want this to go viral. We, uh, we don't want to charge for it. We want to say, um, this is what we can offer for you to learn more about, um, about payroll. Uh, we want to yeah, have curated content, you know, I know not that many people in the payroll profession that, for example, listen to your podcasts. And it's invaluable just to get an idea of what's happening in the in the wider world out there. So these are the kind of things that we want to bring in um, to, to improve professionalism of payroll overall for, for us here. UAE, uh, Saudi, you know, there's 121,000 payroll professionals that I saw on LinkedIn wow. with a name payroll in their name. On, on LinkedIn. So uh, there's a huge field, uh, untapped field, that we can actually work towards um, becoming more professional. That's an amazing statistic. And it's really commendable that we're doing more, again, to raise the profile through learning and through education. It's, uh, it's fantastic, some of the work that I've seen you doing, which was so delighted to have you on the podcast today. Something that um, I really enjoyed, actually, Diana, reading on your website, on which is the OPS Outsource Power Solutions website. And I will put a link to that in the episode notes for those listening to this that, that want to find out more about the services you provide. But you, you put on your website that payroll is a monster on the best of days. Lucky for you, we like a challenge. It'd be great if you could tell us a little bit more about the business services that actually OPS do provide within within the Middle East um, and if you can just sort of if there is a, a someone listening to this maybe they've got a, a large Middle East um, employee presence maybe it's just one or two employees if they're not quite sure where to get started or perhaps they're considering outsourcing that aspect of the payroll what are the, some of the services that OPS do provide? Yes. So firstly, um, payroll has to be fun. And this is why we mm. actually um, made it a little bit tongue in the cheek. Uh, but apart from uh, from um, having a personality and being fun, we are quite serious about payroll. That's the only thing that we do. We are payroll experts and payroll professionals in the whole of the Middle East. We do payroll mapping from the beginning. We uh, For new uh, clients that come on board, we do payroll policies. We make sure that they are compliant to um, the whole of the Middle East. Uh, quite a few, a number of our clients have offices in the different GCC countries. So um, apart from making sure that we have um, the employment contracts and so is compliant to all the legislation, uh, we do payroll audits, we do payroll training, anything uh, with the name payroll in front uh, of, of their name, except payroll merchandise, we're not there yet, <laughs> uh, we, uh, we do for, for the whole of, of the Middle East. Fantastic. So last question before we open the vault really is, is for a business that's considering maybe outsourcing, at what point does it become, in your view, an attractive proposition to outsource that sort of element of your payroll? You know, at what point commercially, it, it, you know, if, if it was if I was a business with just one employee, would, would, would you still recommend that I came to someone like yourself to help me? Or, or does it get to a certain point where you go, actually, it's at this point that this is when you should really start considering whether or not you want to keep that in-house or whether outsourcing might actually be the better solution? So you know that when you start up a company in the Middle East, um, you have very little knowledge of, of any of that legislation. So a number of our clients are those that start up that are three, four, five employees and grow um, that said, can you do the full payroll function for me? Can you um, have your payroll system give me access to it that I'm sitting somewhere in uh, where my head office is and I can, I can actually view my reports and the like? Right to um, our largest client uh, size is in the region of about 750 client uh, employees 
that are here that are um, wanting to do the payroll in the right, in the proper way. Sure. So it really ranges. I would say larger than um, that is not really the OPS experience because we prefer the individualized, custom, bespoke kind of a, a experience. We uh, we don't go and say we do payroll for 10,000 employees. That's more a matter of an HRMS where, that we provide golf HR for them. Uh, and we also help them to source um, payroll or we try to get people like you in <laughs> to, uh, to source the right payroll candidates for them to run payroll. I think that's great. It's a very honest response. And as you mentioned, you've got Golf HR as well to help businesses with the HR side of things through the platforming there as well. I will put a link as well to Golf HR also in the episode notes. So I'm going to very quickly open the vault down, if I may. Entering the vault. Uh, One piece of advice you would give to someone working in payroll right now. Uh, Be curious. Uh, we we tend to want to do payroll in the same way and with uh, with analytics with giving insights back to our clients we've got to stay curious love that if you had the power of foresight and you could change the entire payroll industry with one action or improvement what would that global action or improvement be Oh, what an interesting question. Um, <laughs> uh, there's a there's a hundred things that pop in my mind. Eh? I go back to um, technology from the beginning. We are we don't understand um, in the payroll world how much tech can um, can support us. So we revert many a times back to our Excel sheets and payroll technology with ma- machine learning and with all that kind of thing will demand a new type of payroll expert. And that would be my advice that we, that we from the beginning, work with payroll technology to aid and support us. Fantastic. And last question about what's the one thing that you think needs to happen for the global payroll profile to really increase as we move into the year 21, 22? We're in it now. So over the next five years, if you want to raise that profile, what's the one thing you really think needs to happen for that to occur? Training, certification, qualifications. I would love to uh, to have a degree in payroll, uh, you know, uh, and have it here in the Middle East. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure. Of course, if anyone wants to find out more about the services you provide, um, you do uh, OPS, of course, offer a wide spectrum of integrated payroll solutions and services. Uh, the website is ops.ae, but I will put a link to that website in the episode notes as well. So just click straight through the episode notes so you can get that link. But also, of course, you also provide robust and powerful payroll and HR platform, which is built specifically for the Middle East, which you can find at gulfhr.ae. Are there any other links you'd like me to share or or any places perhaps people can find yourself, Diana, if people want to connect with you directly? We'd like to share the training link to you. And, Please do. Uh, if there are people that, uh, that are in the UK or the rest of the world that want to have a introduction in fundamentals of payroll in the Middle East, we'd love you to do that. It'd be my absolute delight to share that. Anything that helps improve the the, uh, the skill set of the Pearl Professional, and as you say, it's completely free. We want that to go viral, so hopefully the Pearl Podcast can make that happen as well. So please do send me the link. I'll make sure that's also made available in the episode notes as well. So if you want to learn about Middle Eastern payroll, you can do that free of charge by following that link in our episode notes. So please do check that out. And of course, if you are a payroll leader listening to this podcast and you have a payroll-related vacancy that you need some support with, please do get in touch with myself. I'd love to show you what a great payroll recruitment experience can feel like you can get me at nick at jjrecruitment.com or give me or any of my wonderful team a call on 01727 800 377 or visit our website jjrecruitment.com my last thing i wanted to say down is thank you ever so much for joining me today on the payroll podcast it's been a brilliant whistle stop tour about all things middle east payroll which is fantastic it's new to the payroll podcast and it's been an absolute delight of mine to be able to welcome you to the show thank thanks for joining me today thank you very much same here have a nice day Thanks for listening, folks. I look forward to being you the next episode of the Payroll Podcast. We'll see. Thank you so much for tuning into the Payroll Podcast with Nick Day of JGA Recruitment. If you need help with a current payroll vacancy, then please get in touch with Nick and his team. All contact details can be found in the episode notes. In the meantime, to make sure you never miss a future episode, please subscribe to the show through any of your favorite podcast channels. Till next time.